Hans, we're in Ho Chi Minh City in Saigon, right in the middle of it. So you have been to this amazing country for over 20 years now. When you think of Switzerland, what do you still miss even after those years? What I miss here in Vietnam, maybe the punctuality, mm -hmm. reliability, and the uh, Knorr Aromat. Knorr Aromat, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. What is interesting, what do you like in, in Vietnam? What I like is the energy of the people to improve themselves, to progress in economy mm -hmm. and uh, social life. And of course, my two boys, mm -hmm. which are, who are going to school here. I learned you graduated from high school in 1968. How was studying life in St. Gallen back then? Oh, I think it was paradise. I was <laughs> uh, active in the students fraternity, Sovinia. We had a lot of fun, of course, in the tourism department. And of course, it was another time. We, typed my dissertation on the typewriter okay. about 10 times did it was the right <laughs> <laughs> mostly good memories good oh, time best memory i think i still think it's the best university i could have chosen so now that you're here in vietnam what do you feel does time mean in in that society is it also more short-term thinking or long-term thinking what would you say short-term thinking you have uh, people that have very good, well-paid jobs. They uh, risk their job for the sake of the family, for instance. They would uh, prefer to put their boy to school in the morning than to be on time at work. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very common. Family is above everything. Mm -hmm. But also this will diminish over time with the urbanization mm -hmm. of the people not living in the same house anymore. So you also faced some challenges when you married your Vietnamese wife. So do you think the idea of family is different between Switzerland and Vietnam? Yeah, it's quite different. Uh, one of the main differences I would say the children are supposed to obey their parents in everything, even uh, when they are older. They still have to announce when they come home and uh, where they go and with whom they go. That is like it was in our old times mm -hmm. when we were small. So you also did a lot of work within the education system here in Vietnam. Yeah. What would you say are the, the major differences when you look at Switzerland? You had the chance to go to high school. What do you think is, is different? Well, one difference, the people here like to study, like to learn, and they like to have degrees. Mm -hmm. So they would not so much care about the content, but they would ask uh, what is the best way to get the degree when they enter the program. Mm -hmm. So the thinking is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And they are very strong in memorizing. Mm -hmm. So they want the teacher to teach and they memorize it. They don't want to think by themselves because thinking by themselves is also dangerous in a system like Vietnam, mm -hmm. one party system. For instance, research is uh, monopolized also by the party. Mm -hmm. So you can do some research in physics, but not in economics or uh, social sciences. Mm -hmm. That would be dangerous if you find out something. So when you think of students at high school now, with your background, with your experiences, what advice would you give them? I would uh, advise each one to have an internship somewhere in Asia. Mm -hmm. To work in a completely different society is a good experience for a future job. And then maybe it happens to people like it happened to you that you come for two years and then you stay for 20 years because you like it so much. <laughs> yeah, the, the good thing is that there used to be a shortage of women and there will be a shortage of women through to the child policy in China 
and Vietnam there is uh, more uh, male than female, so maybe it will not be a danger anymore. Great. That's the final statement. Thank you so much, Hans, for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you from Saigon. Either.